Okay. Greetings, fellow classmates. Uh, Les Bennett here in Kingston, Ontario. It's a bit cold right now, uh, but we'll we'll. And then I realize some of you are are in warmer climes, but we'll get going. And I'll talk about the Slowpoke Two facility at RMC that's that's there now, but wasn't there in, in our day. I'll make a brief description of it and and indicate a unique application uh, for the reactor. Um, the Slowpoke is a, is an acronym for Safe Low Power Critical Experiment, which was dreamt at a, at a coffee time uh, session at Chalk River Labs, and they were experimenting on trying to produce a small, affordable, accessible, and inherently safe reactor because the research reactors up to that time were rather large and, and complicated. Um, this one was designed mainly for radioisotope production, in which one could produce, as, as we did, uh, short-lived radioisotopes for training purposes out in the field. And by the end of the practice, uh, they would be well decayed. Uh, the main application is NAA, which is neutron activation analysis. And that's used to irradiate uh, samples to produce gamma rays uh, for each element that you're interested in, analyze them, and then um, uh, allow them to, de to decay. And, and the sample that would be used would not be changed in any way unlike any chemical analysis in which you have to somehow do some chemical work to it to get it into to the machine. Uh, so if you ended up with your sample if desired, um, it might be needed for legal reasons or it might be valuable uh, historically. An example would be Napoleon's hair because he was considered possibly to have died from arsenic poisoning and it's been, it was analyzed recently at one of the slowpoke reactors uh, determined so. So there's a wide range of application for NAA, and I could try to go through a number of them, but I've decided just to take one, uh, uh, another area uh, that's unique to, the, to our installation at RMC, and that's on neutron radiography, uh, which started off with film, and now it's done electronically with a camera, et cetera, and that's referred to as neutron imaging. Uh, we also managed to do a bit of neutron tomography, but uh, um, I'll leave that to later. So looking at the, the image on the left, this is the installation at RMC. Uh, we're at the floor level here. Uh, there's water in this very deep pool all the way to the bottom um, uh, where the reactor container is, the reactor core is, sorry, inside this reactor container suspended from uh, these I-beams. And the depth of water is designed to allow people to be in the reactor room when the reactor is operating. Uh, at uh, any power level and uh, the radiation level is the same as it would be out in, in, in the field beyond the, the building. The reactor core is, is shown here in a photo. There's about 200 fuel pins in there. And that is inside, if you go over to the right, uh, a um, bottom section of the reactor container. And it's surrounded by an annulus of beryllium. And that's a, a reflector as is the slab at the bottom that bounces the, the neutrons back in and keeps um, them in the core area. And essentially was, was the design idea of, of the, the Chalk River people to have a very small reactor. As the reactor is used and the fuel is burned up, there is a tray at the top where beryllium shims are just added until you get near the top. After that, your only choice is to refuel the, the reactor, which was just done recently for us. In the annuals, in a, in a, circulating, circu in a circular pattern around the reactor is uh, uh, radiation uh, sites, and uh, there's pneumatic uh, systems to allow samples to come into the reactor for radiation, and then to go back out again uh, for analysis. And there's another row, um, uh, outside uh, as well to use. So there's, there's 10 sites possibly in, in available. In the center is a control rod and it's got cadmium in it and cadmium is a strong absorber of neutrons. So when the control rod is fully into the core, the reactor is essentially shut down. And when you wanna start the reactor up, essentially what you do is, is haul the core, the reactor uh, the control rod out a bit to uh, provide whatever neutron flux level or power level that you want. 
Uh, here's a shot a picture uh, on the right of the control room um, just after in, in, installation of, of the reactor. You can see it just over here. And there's the radiation lines that carry on from those irradiation sites up into the second floor where neutron activation analysis is done um, using the various detectors that, that are up there. In behind here is a control room, and this is the inside of the control room with the, the original analog system of strip chart recorders and buttons and whatnot. Not very useful in terms of visualizing what's going on in, in the reactor. And being a third generation analog control console um, from about 15 years ago when the first little poke was designed uh, to another 15 years that we use it for, by the time we got to around the year 2000, um, we were th hopefully thinking that we could replace it with a digital system. Nothing was available. So with a number of thesis projects, we ended up with the following system called Solpoke Integrated Reactor Control and Instrumentation System, or CIRCUS. And this is the shot from on, on, on a uh, computer monitor and it's operated with a mouse. Uh, when, what one would do it would be to sign in, check over here for any, any um, alarms and warnings, et cetera. Um, press the reactor startup button it, and it's showing now that it's operating, it's changed to that. The control rod actually moves in, in and out in this mimic, so, which you could not see before, of course. Um, and the flux level would show up. Uh, it also, you'd see indications on the flu flux and the charts and rod positions as temperature and power and so on. All of your, your actions are recorded here. And over here, you will see uh, the radiation sites that are, are in use um, and available. And over here is uh, something that I put in uh, asked to put in uh, before um, uh, final, um, during the commissioning period so that uh, we would have more neutrons coming out to a neutron beam tube, which I'll describe later. So usefulness of the slow poke at RMC is for undergraduate and graduate teaching and research from first year to fourth year, various laboratory experiments on the reactor. And these occurred nicely during the, the academic year when lectures are given, so they fit in quite well compared to what we had before, uh, which for a number of years, we, the only reactor available in Ontario was at McMaster and we would do, go down there during the, the academic um, uh, week uh, or tour week, if you remember that. Uh, for design projects and thesis topics from fourth year to master's PhD, both at RMC and Queens, um, the reactor was quite useful for them. Uh, for research and even routine or uh, and rapid analysis for neutron activation analysis or counting. For example, we would get uh, samples in from people who had monitored uh, areas and uh, thought they were radioactive and it usually would turn out to be just uh, background radiation. And even modeling of different designs of uh, based on the, the uh, slowpoke uh, was done. Uh, there, was a, there was a wide range of applications. I would say probably half were in the military and government and other would be, a, the rest would be in university or businesses. An example would be a local business who had a product that uh, wouldn't be shipped until uh, they uh, did a quick analysis of, the, of their product and it went out the door. Uh, for training and support, uh, the nuclear emergency response teams on both coasts for visiting nuclear submarines, we supported them and even had uh, sub detector systems on each coast. And uh, it's similar to the nuclear emergency monitoring team in the UK, um, which I spent some time with when I was over there on an exchange posting at the Royal Naval College at Greenwich. For recruiting education uh, from visitors to the commandant and, and principal down, down, down to other visitors, school groups, conferences, tours and talks. Um, we did that uh, quite a lot. In fact, one year I, I counted the number of visits and there were, there were a, a number of pe people visiting and there were a thousand. And one neat, uh, uh, connection and, and opportunities for, for, for the research, uh, for more research for staff was the based on the fact that uh, we had a reactor, an operating reactor there. And that, that certainly opened up a lot of avenues for, for staff. 
Uh, I'll now talk about uh, the one unique application of, of the reactor, uh, which is neutron radiography. And it's similar to X, X and gamma rays, um, except in their behavior. And you can see on this plot of their, their attenuation versus atomic number. And we all know that, that as you go up in, in mass in, or atomic number with, with um, uh, X-rays, uh, lead, for example, is, is a good attenuator of, of X-rays. And Superman knows that, of course. Uh, for neutrons, though, they, there's no smooth curve. They're all over the place. And they're also possibly, you could think, in a, in a reverse um, uh, attenuation pattern. And it, with light elements, such as in water or explosives, um, which has hydrogen in it, you can do items of elements of interest are indicated here, such as hydrogen and oxygen and so on, compared to other materials, such as aluminum, uh, down here and, and uh, uh, iron over here. Um, these, these are good candidates for neutron radiography. So um, for example, ex explosives on the bolts between stages and rockets, they are 100% neutron radiograph because that's, that's, that's the best way to ensure their integrity. So, Back to looking at the reactor, uh, there's the floor level, there's the water level in the pool now shown uh, down to the bottom where the reactor core is. And uh, one needs to have neutrons all the way up here, focused uh, in, in a beam with very little gamma radiation, which also very well pre present in the core. And uh, that was uh, installed in the reactor um, after after a commissioning uh, sort of years later, and it took several years to get this to work. Uh, but finally we did. And um, the tipping of the reactor uh, uh, in, in the reactor pool of the collimator was a, a way of uh, having a, a shutter arrangement. So you can see up here, if it was hinged at this point and we move this up or down, uh, if we allowed it to, to the, this to move up, this would just float vertically in the pool and you'd have to push it up against the reactor to, to have a beam come out. So that was essentially our shutter. Uh, there, so we ended up with the near vertical orientation of our objects up on this, this area here, which is a positioning system that would, could be con computer controlled and uh, remotely so that we wouldn't have to be in the room uh, if we wanted to just move an object and still keep the beam uh, up into this area. This is essentially a bottom beam stop uh, with the sample in this area and then a couple of beam stop on top to, to um, attenuate the, the neutrons coming through. Um, so neutron radiography was first done with film uh, and, and a vacuum cassette and, and a series of cassettes and then later with a, a camera and a scintillation screen. So the very top then of the, of the beam, if you remember that photo of the, the reactor room with the nice clear floor and uh, the railing around it, that was removed. And we have this mess of equipment. Uh, there's the bottom beam stop, an upper beam stop. This is that positioning system. There's the reactor room over there. Um, and when the sample is put in place, the extra shielding is dropped down over it. So there's no radiation coming out of here. And um, the shot is taken and this is moved up and the sample, if it's a long sample, would be moved over. Now the application for this mainly was for the CF-18. And the reason is over here, there's a rudder missing. And although we only had two rudders to part in flight in those years, the US Navy who flew these aircraft off of carriers had about 15, which meant that replacements were, uh, which were worth about a million dollars each, were unavailable. So we had to come up with a fix and the, all of the, ND tech, the NDT techniques, that's non-destructive testing techniques available at the time were tried out and it turned out that neutron radiography is the best. Now, if you look on this uh, image, uh, there's the rudder and it is a graphite epoxy uh, cover with a lunum honeycomb uh, inside. So we did numerous rudders and we also had these trailing edge flaps um, as well to, to investigate. Here's a neutron reader graph or a number of neutron reader graphs that are placed together to image in a rudder. 
And if you can look at the bottom here, you'll see sort of dots, circular dots. You're looking down through the aluminum honeycomb. The aluminum's not being imaged, but the water in that, because it's a neutron radiograph, is. And over here, you can see sort of a, a lighter grayer area, and there's just moisture or smaller amounts of water over here. Now, what the US did to fix this, supposedly, was to drill holes in here and put in plugs. And then put and then seal them up again. The difficulty with that is that that as you you did that repeatedly, the uh, rudders just got heavier and heavier. So we tried to, to find a better uh, arrangement. So what we came what we came up with, and this was a PhD student thesis, um, was to remove the hinges and put on a heating blanket. And this is just a small one over a, a section of a of a rudder that was used as, as a, a example to, to try out the, 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 the fix. Uh, put on a heating blanket, uh, you know, putting on this heating blanket, larger versions over here on, on an actual rudder, a seal it in a bag, and add a, a vacuum pump, various meters, dew point probe, et cetera, and then a water trap. So we put this on top of the, um, the neutron beam tube and we took radiographs as, as we were going through this. And here are uh, are a couple of, of images from uh, for one particular rudder. Uh, we had two rudders that we we completely dried. After the first drying cycle, you can see there's a little less water in here. In fact, a reasonable amount because the first cycle took out a fair amount of water. And then we found that after the sixth drying cycle, we could not see any moisture, water, or anything left and hopefully it, it sort of healed itself. So, so the, between five and six cycles, and we rec recommended six cycles, um, about 35 hours in total, uh, we hopefully you had a rudder that um, was usable again. Um, and the drying procedure was tested at Cold Lake, and uh, I believe these, these rudders were used until we could get replacements. So that, that was the unique application of the reactor. Um, Overall, uh, we should acknowledge uh, the planning, the installation, the operation support of a number of people over more than 36 years, but all staff levels at, um, at Jock River who did the work on, on producing these, these little reactors, for people at U University of Toronto who um, shared their experience with the original Slowpoke 1 prototype and the Slowpoke 2 reactor years before ours came, and of course, all the staff at RMC that uh, helped in getting the reactor to the college. So Slowpoke 2 staff, uh, at, certainly at RMC and, and those at the other uh, reactor sites. And we had a, a users group, which I referred to as SLUG, that uh, we shared our, our experiences and uh, problems. Undergraduate, summer and graduate students did a lot of work in, in the use of the reactor and, and um, both for themselves and, and for the, the knowledge base for the reactor, as well as the RMC technicians who really helped. And they weren't just from the, my department, Kevin Kemenge, uh, a number of departments helped out as well. And all other users and researchers from wherever that used the reactor and, and uh, shared their experiences. And finally, the, the ACB CNSC licensing staff um, that were very helpful, as well as the ACL people who helped commission the reactor twice now, um, um, maintenance through the years and the refueling staff that were there just, just last fall in um, providing, providing a, a new core for us, which gives us hopeful uh, uh, that we will be able to run for another 36 or so years. And I'll leave you with the last slide of what I've learned from Slowpokes. Thanks very much, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll be available for questions later.